Welcome to Dominate, where we discuss strength and conditioning and much more. Savage, Mark Friedman. How are you? It's been an honor training you for all these years. So Dominate Discussions is basically what I want, you know, the reason why I picked you and wanted to talk to you was because for me personally, it's your unwavering, but correct me if I'm wrong, your unwavering focus, your unwavering commitment. You're the type of athlete that I have to pull back. and Not that I have to focus, just pull back and actually, you know, slow down just a little bit. But I love that I have to do that. And, I, and for me as a coach, I work better with those athletes. But what I'm interested in is, you know, what's your ultimate dream? Well, obviously, it's to play in the NHL and uh, make a name for myself. But just to get back on the point that you just made about me, and, um, that's how I've been brought up. And I'm just a guy who's, um, if I'm going to do something, might as well put 150% into it. And um, there's never enough that I can't do personally, especially when I'm in the gym. I always want to do more and more and more as much as I can. Sometimes that's not good, you know. But uh, that's just the kind of yeah, you know, that's just the kind of guy I am. I just wanna. I know there's gonna be it's gonna be someone working just as hard or even harder than I am, and I that 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 kills me in my mind to know that someone's working super hard. So I just want to do everything I can to match him or, or or beat him that that next day. Amen, amen. Just to be clear, who are you, and what sport you play, and what's your team? Uh, my name is Mark Friedman, and I play ice hockey, um, and I play for the Philadelphia Flyers. How long have you been training um, with LPS? Uh, I think it's got to be close to 10 years, no? Um, at least nine. Yeah, at least all the way nine, back nine, to nine, all yeah, the way back to my favorite gym on Spadina. Yeah, that was, those, <laughs> are the, those are the days. You know, you came in with a swag. That was just you. I can remember exactly the first day you walk into this gym. And I love that about you. But I had to rein it in a little bit, right? It's a young kid, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had to rein it in a little bit. Um, but I love that. I just had to direct it. What do you like about the old gym? Well, you see so many guys. Uh, we just got a new guy, the Josie Altador. And the first thing he said was, whoa, the atmosphere in this gym is, is unlike no other. Um, that's what's, just, what's drawn me to this place, and you, and, and Jeremy, and um, the whole atmosphere and the athletes that are around. Um, you you kind of get intimidated the first time you get into the gym, you know, with the loud music. You didn't show on. it, though. Oh, you didn't no, show it. You didn't no, show you it. You can't show intimidation. Yeah. But uh, when you walk in here, you hear the loud music. You see Maya hitting a 5,000-pound clean and squat, whatever. Um, Gordo and Fabian. Um, it's just you see athletes who just love to come here and work and compete. That's what it comes down to. And, and for you, that worked with your mindset. Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, I have a short switch. I'm, I'm, that's the kind of guy I am. And like I said, it all goes back to me always wanting to do more and more and more. And um, there's nothing that can get in my way for me to achieve my goal. And that's what I've been looked over so many times because of my size. And hockey players aren't necessarily 5'10 um, nowadays. or they're, they're a bit taller and a bit heavier. And, um, thank God the game's changed to where it's more speed oriented and skill and yeah I mean coming here it definitely doesn't hurt um, you get stronger instantly um, you make connections with people that last a lifetime and um, it's almost turned into a whole family kind of kind of thing for me yeah that, that, I'm proud of that but you said like the game has changed but I always say you know you need that punch when you need it and I always tell people Mark you know don't let his size fool you he packs a punch and I, and I know people are gonna understand what I mean. You know, you squat more than double body weight. You know, you snatch more than your body weight, right? You clean 1.5 times your body weight. All that produces a, a tremendous, you know, first step power. How, how do you feel on the ice? Like, cause you know, you've been working here a long time and we communicate in season and, and so on and so forth. And you know what works for you. Uh, I guess my, my thing is like, you know, how have you felt it? Because at the end of the day, I don't care about gym reps. I don't care how strong you are. You know, I want, does it transfer? That's all I care about. Well, the first thing when people see or what they say about me is when they watch me play is, wow, this guy's fast and explosive. And that's the one thing when I was younger was not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I wasn't the biggest guy, um, like we said, um, and I wasn't the fastest. And that can't be the case. You're either not the biggest, but you're the fastest, or vice versa. Um, and for me, um, coming here, I've only gotten faster and more explosive, and that's definitely helped me um, just to sign my new contract, which I can't thank you enough because that's definitely what you guys have been doing and helped me. And, um, but yeah, social distancing, but it's yeah. hard. You know, just going back to your contract, me as a coach, you know, this is that's why I do this for. To me, you get the most respect in the world because you took time, you know, obviously your, the, your parents are there from day one, but the fact that you took time to give me a call. Yeah, you guys were the third call I made. Yeah. Mom, dad, girlfriend, then you guys. So third or fourth call, you guys were. And, and that means a lot to me. That shows, you know, you don't have to show me, but that shows how much we mean to you. And that's huge for me. Absolutely. You know, yes, I'm all about results and yes, but that when we can have that connection, and you know that you trust me, that everything I tell you is for the best. Because I want to, like, oh, yeah. you, you know how, like, you know how I want you to play in it. You, you know, I just want you to eat. Yeah. And you know, and, and you know, patience. But you, you're going to eat, I know. Everybody has their own. Everybody has their own. With your mentality, I can't see you failing. I just can't see it. It's just like keep, I tell you all the time, I work too damn hard, hard. to get rejected. Exactly. You know? So it, you, you're on your way, you know. Uh, you got a two-year contract, one way, and super excited to watch you play in Philadelphia. I had a question now. Your aggressive mentality. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that's what really helps that explosive power. Because I have to harness that and put it into the bar, put it into the weight, put it. And when you have that like energy that, is, that comes from the inner, it's just, it's easy for me to do that. And then you can see that production on the ice, on the track. You're one of the most fa fastest guys here in the gym, explosive. So I, I don't want that to be overlooked. That is important. And I try to cultivate the, an environment into to the gym because energy is important. Mental focus is important. And I see that you do that well. But I want to go back to you, you know, in the GTHL, coming up, playing um, at school. You went the university route. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I uh, was playing in the GTHL for the Don Mills Flyers. Mm -hmm. So Flyers for life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then actually I was uh, debating my whole junior career on going to the OHL or um, going to college. Um, and I felt that college was the best route for me. And I actually played two years in Iowa for in Waterloo in the USHL before college. What was that like? Uh, it was my first time moving away from home. So mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was a bit nerve wracking for the first year, but the second year it was one of the best years of my life. Um, but then, yeah, college came around and I decided to go to Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. How, how many years were you in I was at Bowling Green for three years. Three years. And, and I remember one year you stayed and trained. In Bowling Green. Yes, which was definitely a mistake. Mm -hmm. College was was good because you train and you play with guys who are bigger and older than guys but they would be in junior hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to work out every day. Mm -hmm. um, you just get into a good um, program. and. Um, you have your daily routine, you go to the gym, you go practice, you go for lunch, and you have your classes the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So that was all good. Obviously, I met my girlfriend there. We've been dating for five and a half years. Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, it got me to uh, play pro hockey after the three years in college. And um, You can't live with any regrets. Sometimes you look back at it saying, oh, if I went to the OHL, would this have helped me? And, but I don't like living like that. Um, but yeah, so college was... At the time, not the most popular decision because guys were going more the OHL route. And, right. Um, you were talking felt to like, your dad about yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, And I just felt that I wanted to be different. I don't like doing the same things as many other guys. So I just, and it helps you put your name out there. Um, so I just wanted to try the school route and I loved it. And yeah, we're here today. On your journey, whether, you know, on the ice, off the ice, what is the most difficult part of this journey so far? But not to say like it's most difficult, but it's helped you grow, grow into who you are today or grown in, in terms of the, you know, in your path towards what you want to achieve. Uh, well, definitely growing as a person. 
Um, you learn a lot on and off the ice, and that's where it, it uh, takes a toll. Um, you got to be a pro on the ice, and especially even more off the ice. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, your relationships you form, you got to stick to them. You got to know the people you can trust. You mm -hmm. got to do all the little things in order for people to trust you. Mm -hmm. um, so important. Yeah, so important. And then when you get to the level, you can't go down the ladder. You got to stay or just keep keep building, you know? Like, mm -hmm. there's guys who just say, you know what, they're they're okay with where they're at and they're satisfied. And to me, I tell you all the time, I'm never satisfied. You can never be satisfied in what you're doing. Um, and yeah, I mean, you just got to take every day. When I was younger, I used to look so far ahead in the future. And today, now, where I feel like I've grown and matured as a person is um, just taking every day one by one. Um, you can't look so far down the road and that's where you create stress for yourself and mm -hmm. that's where bad things happen. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, uh, the whole being a pro on and off the ice is definitely something I've lived, lived by. It's not easy to, because trust is huge. huge. I'm a big proponent, you know, one of my principles, say what you mean. Actually speak loud in the words, yeah. you just gotta live by that too. You, you gotta live by your actions, like you, words don't mean anything to me, it's, it's what, what are your actions? And you're a perfect example of that. And, that's how you build trust. For sure. Um, with me, anyway, you don't build trust by communicating. You know, communication is great, but what are your actions? Yeah. And then you're, you, put, you personify that. So you're, to me, you're, you're a pro, man. So I'm happy. So what's the difference between the old gym and the gym now? And be honest. Don't hold anything back, you savage. <laughs> uh. Don't care about the cameras. Yeah. Let me have it. Uh, well, I mean, obviously the gym here is way bigger and yeah. you can have more people here. and There's more fight between everybody. Everyone wants to top each other. I mean, you can see when I'm training on the first platform over there and I'm looking across all the way to the other one, I want to beat the crap out of that person and see what they're lifting so I can lift 10 times more, you know? Mm -hmm. um, in the old gym, there's only two platforms. Yes. So, I mean, you can't really catch what everyone was doing because you're either on the platform or you're either doing something else. You're yeah. really watching, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, besides that, I mean, this gym is top-notch. I mean, it's got everything you need. The other one, obviously, was a lot smaller. Um, great location. <laughs> the best location ever. But you know what I really love about the old gym and how I harnessed and developed AAS? Everyone was so close. And Everyone was so close. You, you just, Could anybody stand in your way and waste time? No. It's not happening. Yeah, that's true. Mark is down their throat. Yeah. With either a fist or you're in their face. Yeah, yeah. That's just the type of gym we have. Obviously, don't get me wrong, we're not no fighting is allowed in the no, gym. No, no. But you cannot There's some testosterone going You out. cannot get in the way of my animals, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Them dogs, you can't and that's the kind of thing I miss with this gym. It's like people move a little too slow, which sure. annoys me. Because it's not about what's the biggest thing? I want work capacity. I want you to be a Tasmanian devil. Yeah. I want you to come I want you to keep repeating the same efforts at the same intensities over and over and over. That is sport. You cannot compete with somebody like that. No. Right? If you apply a certain intensity and the intensity drops off successively every repetition, what's going on? You're lacking that work capacity. That's what I'm missing here. Yes, it's bigger. And after this whole COVID thing, I really want to figure that out. Because you know, no sharing bars and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But that's that's one that's one component. I'm not saying maybe I'm a little hard on myself, but you, am I right? No, you're for sure right. I mean, there's also you also made a bigger name for yourself now. So I mean, more guys want to come into the gym. So it's not as easy as it was before to uh -huh. bars always moving. You know? Like, yeah. Remember, if, if I heard the bar you, it wasn't moving, then you you <laughs> giving it to someone. <laughs> but, like I said, your name's out there now so everyone knows who you are and everyone wants to come train with pros and just get so much stronger that you can't really people are like there's 10 platforms and there was two before yeah right? yeah so it's harder but yeah but you're you're you you, you feel the benefits of it I oh, guess that's, man. Yeah. like i just read that thing on the wall like the lps the aas act whatever system is eh? But like you didn't know you. You don't know no, about the system. But like you're living it. Steroids. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. But you're not. It's just like your whole mental side gets stronger, and your body gets like it's just it's crazy. And that's another thing that a lot of athletes tell me is that clients just yeah I'm stronger, yeah I'm faster, but I'm just mentally tough. 
and I love that. Well, that's all. If you're not mentally tough, don't train her. Don't train her. Comes down to it. Have fun. Say it again. Have Say fun. it loud. Have fun on Wednesdays because <coughs> strong man, like that's, if you're not mentally tough, don't bother. Yeah. Don't come and we're not mean, and I'm not a mean person, but I'm trying to, I'll, I'll, will. You don't want, you want guys who don't cut corners and if you're cutting corners, that means you're mentally. It weak. bothers me. Yeah, exactly. it, it bothers me because I just want the best for you. Exactly. And if I'm, if I'm wrong, communicate with me. Let me know I'm wrong. Oh, or f like, let me know. Prove it to me. If you do the work, right? Yeah. If you do the work. I think I've done that once. And it didn't yeah. go well for me. Yeah. You tried to tell you you were wrong. I don't think about it. No! I listen, though. Yeah, you do. I listen. Yeah. But you got to prove me wrong. For sure. Give me the data. I'll analyze the data. Only if you're doing the work. But don't fucking not, excuse my language, don't not do the work and complain because I have no data to reference yeah. the, the oh, outcome. Yeah, that's it's just that simple. Sense, yeah. So it's not like I'm not a a player's uh, coach. coach. I listen to my athletes. I want to communicate. Everyone's different. But I need that data. Don't tell me, because how many times you came in to the gym, you don't feel like training. You don't feel like working out. Or it's tough, or you want to go easy. Like, look at yesterday. You, want, you wanted to go. But I didn't. But you didn't. No, and you PR. And you PR on different, ex like, how many times has that happened? And you're not the perfect example, because you're a savage anyway. But, in this system, you're going to feel shitty more times than not. No, no. And it's a, just a, it's the mental. You have to and keep Once that. you warm up, you'll be fine. You'll be That's fine. That's all it is. Oh, it's happened to you over and over. And next oh, minute, yeah. that is one of the most toughest things I have to communicate with, with athletes. Just to get through that mental. Because we're in a, oh, if I feel sore, let me take a day oh, off. Oh, yeah. It's what's in your book. Yeah. <laughs> Go read his book, by the way. Yeah. Um, no, like I, I read your book. And like one of the things was... Um, if you feel like shit one morning, I don't want to hear about it. Come in, train. Don't go as heavy if you don't, if you're not, if your body's not feeling up to it. But if you're in the gym, you're still gonna get better. That's all it is. Right? That's all it is. What's your, what's, what's, we coined a, a saying by you one day, I'll never forget, we're outside, we're, we're just hammering for farmers walk on the street. Remember, like in the old gym? Yeah, Spadina, yeah. Yeah. farmers walk, like, even the, the people in the condos used to be a show. They know what time we're out doing oh, yeah. farmer's walk. We had quite and, the crew come Quite the crew. And yeah. <laughs> and you guys do farmer's walk, the strong man stuff. And it's like, and I hear you guys point. Hard work becomes easy work. Hard work. Like I heard, like it was just like a mantra to get you through that workout. So I put oh, that yeah. in the book. Hard work becomes easy work. And you're so right. And one of the things I want to go back to, it's our hard work becomes easy work. I was so, back in the day, I was so... You know, no, you only have to do this. I don't want you to do anything out of the gym. I learn from you. I learn, I watch. I'm always watching. People think I'm watching, but I'm watching. You know I'm always watching. I listen, I pay attention. You used to leave the gym, go skate. Back in those days, I didn't want you to do so much outside work. I'm watching you You skate. Sometimes before. Before, come to the gym and still PR it. I'm going, what the fuck is going on? But what has what I realized is that you adapted to the work. Yeah. Your level is this while someone else's level is this. So I realized that clients, just let them go. Let's see what happens. Let's see if there's a breaking point. There has never, there's not. Besides yeah. my surgery, but that was some freak incident. Freaking, freak incident. But you know, like in terms of your work capacity, because at the end of the day, this is a, we collect data. Yeah. This system gives me data. So if you are PRing every week and not failing, I know you're not pushing hard enough, number one. Number two, if um, you're missing too frequently, you're pushing too hard. Number three, if you're progressing and I can see you putting some work, you're doing the right, because it's always pushing you, but just pushing you enough. And what I've noticed is your numbers always went up and you, and you pretty much are going hard. At all, all the time, not pretty much. You are a lot of times. I have to hold you back because I can see. Okay, no, Mark, not today. Let's leave it to the next day, Mark. No, but that's how I I really just learned to accept that. Okay, no, he can tolerate the work, and that's how I you helped me create other animals who can. No, just keep doing the work. I'll talk to these young athletes nowadays. Oh, should I? Should he skate before? No, skate. Come in and lift. You can, can you skate after? Yes. Lift and go skate. That keyword adaptation is that you really help me 
harness that. The human organism has an amazing ability to adapt if the mind can tolerate. That's what you've taught me, so I thank you. Okay, <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs>